In this video, we're going to take a look at the system's life cycle in the analysis phase for ICT. So the system's life cycle uh, describes the processes of steps involved in designing and maintaining a new system. So we go through the analysis phase, design phase, development and testing, implementation, documentation and evaluation. Now a lot of people think that going into a business and doing any kind of analysis and consultation is as easy as this. In, fire 30% of the workforce, new logo, boom, out. You are now a fully trained management consultant. However, as you can see on screen, there's a lot more into it than what people may think. So, a system in general. So, a systems analysis team is brought in to review an existing system and suggest improvements. So, you might go into a business and they might have a database system that's all manually filed uh, on paper in filing cabinets. Or it might be a really old computer-based operation that is just not adequate for the task anymore. So, a company will come in, or an in-house design company within the actual business itself, and um, they come in and develop a completely new system, um, usually in the form of like a database or a computer program that reinvigorates the business, makes things easier, makes things more efficient, or it might even be just to cover things like data protection laws need to actually revamp the system in general. So a systems analyst is a person who analyzes the system. Now they're employed by a business to help them improve the system, and the idea is to make um, the business run a lot more smoothly and essentially save money by saving time. If you can make um, a job that takes three people to do and pass that job onto a computer system that one person runs, you're saving two people that you can make them do something else. So the idea is that you're saving time, you're saving money, you're more efficient. So the first stage is the analysis stage. So this is all about understanding the needs of the client and helping the clients themselves understand what they actually want to achieve with this new system. So we need to research the organisation, how it works and how it uses its data. So once we put together a document, it's called a system specification and this outlines what the software will do and what hardware we actually need. Now, first things first, we need to actually research the business and find out what we actually need to do. So one thing you can do is a team will go in and watch the personnel do their work and see how it works. So they can see how does one department run their department and so on, and you can gain valuable information. However, as you can probably tell when you've uh, watched teachers get observed, some may act differently, some may get a lot more nervous. I know personally, I find it, I find it a little bit nerve wracking if someone's watching me teach. So you behave a little bit differently, you might be a bit jittery, a bit nervous, or you know, staff might actually do something completely different to look better. It also might make people feel uncomfortable, they might be absolutely fine with somebody watching them, but if you feel like somebody senior is looking at what you're doing, you might be prone to mistakes because you're panicking or whatever. So, gain information, you can see exactly how things work, but it might make staff uncomfortable. Now one thing you could do is send out a questionnaire. Now, depending on what the questionnaire is, will depend on how many people actually bother responding to your questionnaire. So it's easy to find out views on the business, it's easy to, um, things like yes, no answers, it's absolutely fine. Like, do you enjoy working here? Yes. Does the system currently work for you? Yes. But if a person's got like maybe a subjective uh, response, maybe they think, actually, I think I'd improve this, you can't really get that level of detail. And the answers can be quite vague. But it is quick and easy to get a load of their ideas out. Maybe if you want to change staff holidays, you can say, right, we want to change this holidays, this holiday, do you want this or not? Yes or no, nice and easy. Now one thing you could do is an interview. That's a one-on-one -on -one questioning system which can probe deeply into a specific aspect of the system so you can get the head accountant and get them to explain exactly how something works. This gets an open and honest response, but if you're trying to interview every member of each department, that could take hours. Especially if you've got like a half an hour interview per person, you've got 100 staff, that's a lot of time. And then you could look at the paperwork. So the, the analyst looks at all the existing paperwork and see how and sees how the paper data is kept. Or even it could be the digital data if it is not a paper-based system. Now this allows someone to see firsthand how the system works, how it's stored, how it's used, how it's filled in. But again, that will take a lot of time. And remember, at the end of the day, if it takes a lot longer, it means you've wasted a lot more money. So the one thing we can use is a data flow diagram. Now this is used to determine what processes are in the system, what data they need to work from, and from whom 
and what data they to provide and to whom. So you can see, you can say right to book the room, the guest needs to get a booking confirmation, but the guest also needs to give a booking request and so on. Now they're used to describe the inputs, outputs and processing of the current system. They then they identify any problems, any user and information requirements for the new system, and then what hardware and what software is needed. So it may be a case of we need an entirely new system with an entirely new database, but they might actually need to go out and buy better hardware to handle the amount of traffic it's going to get. So everything needs to be taken into account. Now, I've got an exam question on the board. What I present suggest you do is pause the video, give it an answer, and then look at your answer compared to mine on the next page. So, a small company makes toys and delivers them to shops. Throughout the day, orders are received by the company from its customers. The office workers in the finance department create and store an invoice for each order. They are too busy to be disturbed from their work. Delivery drivers receive copies of the invoices, which they pass on to their customers. The drivers make a large number of deliveries per day and do not return to the office. A systems analysis will research the current system and suggest improvements to be made. For each type of employee identified above, describe the most suitable method of collecting information from them, given a reason for your choice. So pause the video and give that an answer. So now for the answers. So for the office workers, you'd want to do a staff observation. Now the reason is, they're in the building all the time, so the analyst can easily see how systems work in the regular schedule of the workday. If you did interviews or questioning, that would interrupt them, and there's probably far too many people for you to interview, so you'd have to do an observation to find out how they work. For delivery drivers, you'd look at their paperwork. So each day they'd bring the paperwork back, and that can be examined to see how the system works, understand how the file system works and how the information is stored. Again, just like the office workers, they're too busy to be interviewed, and if you were observing them, they may act differently. Hopefully that um, helped you out and you understood the analysis phase of the system development lifecycle and I will see you in the next video where we look at the design phase.